Uh, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Michael Merrin from CG School. Today we'll be going over an introduction to PF Track. Um, this webinar is a preview of what you could learn at the CG School. Also, the early bird deadline for the first few classes is next week, and this will be your last opportunity to receive up to $300 off each class. And for more information, please check out our schedule at thecgschool.com. Um, it seems like we have a couple of people late starting. I know there's been some problems with sound and audio in a previous um, webinar, so I hope that everyone um, can hear this clearly and uh, see everything smoothly. I know this video is being recorded right now, so should there be any problems, it will be made available in, uh, in July. So we're going to be looking at PF track over the next, um, over the next hour, and specifically at match moving, match moving of course. Um, it's a technique which is primarily about integrating a CG object into live action footage. Um, we're trying to extract the camera's position, rotation, and any field of view changes that might happen throughout the shot so that we can have our 3D cameras move in our 3D applications, whether it be Max, Maya, um, Cinema 4D, XSI, whatever. Uh, so when we render out uh, those programs and then later on in compositing, uh, we can match the, the original source footage. Now, done well, uh, match moving is kind of an invisible art, um, and you shouldn't notice it. Done badly, and you will notice it for sure. Things will um, pop off the screen, wobble, slide, and it's all of those things that we want to try and avoid uh, with um, decent quality match moving. So we're going to be looking at PF Track, the Pixel Farms PF Track. Um, you are able to download a trial version of um, PF Track by uh, registering or submitting a request to the Pixel Farm at pixelfarm.co.uk. Um, the only limitation of um, that would be that you won't be able to export um, to your host app, your host 3D application or your compositor. But everything else that we'll be going through today you will uh, be able to do for sure. So let's just get out of here and run PF Track. Okay, so we have, let me just check, we have about 108 people on. Um, a fairly large uh, number of people with me having no idea about the user experience of match moving or PF track or any other tracking software for that matter. So I'm going to try and move fairly quickly through the next hour um, without getting too hung up on the small details, but also I'm going to give you a basic overview um, of the most commonly used functions and tools within PF track. It wouldn't make sense for me to spend a long time going over what each individual button does. So what I'll try to do is um, give you a brief overview, and as I keep revisiting the same tools, I'll explain what I'm doing along the way, and hopefully that'll sink in. So the interface with PF Track, first of all, it's a fairly simple, um, nice UI to work with. Across the top is the main toolbar for commonly used uh, functions and controls, all grayed out um, currently because we have no, um, no project set up. Um, the main area here in the center, the large open space in the center of the UI is where we're going to be looking at our source footage, um, so playing backwards and forwards, and also any other viewers that we might have, perspective or orthographic. Um, top right is the controls for those particular viewers, which we'll, we'll, kind of, we'll visit those a bit later on. Down at the bottom is where our timeline is going to be displayed with options for playback um, and also um, the dope sheet and F curves for the camera. On the left hand side, in the project overview, this is where we will have um, our shots located. We can have multiple shots um, within the one PF track file. And as we would select any of those shots, the shot information per shot is going to appear in this dialog box over here. So the first thing that um, I'm going to do as a 3DS Max user is to go to File, Preferences. And over in the Calibration tab, I'm just going to make sure that UZ is up. Um, if you're a Maya user, that may not be as important for you, but for 3ds Max and to keep things consistent, I'm going to use the Z as up and OK that. OK, so first of all, let's, um, let's start up a new project. I'm going to click on File, New Project. I'm going to call this Test underscore 01. And uh, it's going into the desktop tracking folder, which is just fine. Um, I have one that already exists, and now I'm going to override that. Okay, 
So now we've got a new project, we can see that it's included an untitled shot. And with that selected, we now have um, the shot overview down on the left-hand side through here. Um, we need to Im obviously import some footage to work with. So with the untitled shot selected, I'm going to go to the import footage icon and then navigate to a piece of source footage supplied by Uniform from a film they did a few years ago for um, Crystal. And I'm going to select that. 0 to 100 is fine. And load. Okay, um, so we have 100 frames of our footage. Before I move on to um, anything else, I'm just going to make sure that we're going to be working at the same frame rate as what we'll be producing our final um, rendered image or final movie at. So over in the shot overview, I'm going to right click on aerial footage, choose edit format, and in the format drop down, choose PAL, which is going to be frame rate at 25 frames a second. Now it's a fairly uh, long shot for the purpose of this tutorial, but so we don't want to track all of it. It's going to take too long to track forwards, track backwards. So I'm going to just go to frame 50. And at the bottom in the viewer controls, I'm going to just set the out point by clicking on the set out point option here. And that's going to bracket from 0 to 50. I'm going to just cache that as well so you can watch it play back and get an idea of the camera movement through the space. Okay, it's a fairly simple aerial, um, an aerial move. Um, it shouldn't really provide anything too tricky for us to deal with. But it's going to give us plenty to kind of go off and get you a good understanding or a base introduction to match moving in general. So, what are we going to be going through? Well, traditionally, there's kind of like two main methods of um, tracking in PF Track, and that would be first of all doing um, a 2D track. And from those 2D points, the 3D camera is, um, uh, is, is solved. And then the second thing that we're going to be looking at today, actually, is uh, geometry tracking to solve the camera position, uh, which would involve no um, 2D tracking whatsoever. So first of all, we're going to look at the more traditional method, which, should be, which is very similar to um, tracking methods from uh, Buju, um, Synthize, um, and uh, RealViz MatchMover. But before I do that, um, we're going to have a look at inputting some initial data for this shot. Now, I know what camera this was taken on, and if, it's really important, I think, when you're going to be doing any sort of match moving, whether it be uh, for moving uh, images, or even still images for architectural work, that you have, or if you're able to, get as much, much information on the camera as possible, and any information that's within your scene is going to obviously help with the accuracy of the camera match. Um, this was shot on a Sony F900, I think. Well, I mean, I know. Um, let me just print up the internet. So this is a camera it was shot on. Now I'm just doing a little bit of research, and we can see that it's a two-third inch chip. Um, and then scouting around a little bit further than that, and finding the Panavision um, common frames and formats, we can see that they're two-third inch chip as um, in inches is 0.3775 across. Now this is a fairly important point to note. Um, lots of the people get confused sometimes with, um, with uh, what the film back is in the CCD and, and trying to find that information. And it is relatively important that you input that data um, because it has a bearing on the field of view if you're give, giving, a, giving a certain focal length because with a smaller CCD or a smaller film back or the piece of film as you were if that's, um, if that's smaller than a 35mm camera, the field of view is going to be different um, for any given lens. It's called the crop factor, and it's an important point to note with any camera matching. So we're going to input that information from the Panavision website directly into uh, PF Track. I'm going to do that by going...